Now, a couple of weeks ago on the programme, Mark reviewed a new documentary called Stray, which was an insight into the lives of three stray dogs in Istanbul. The film is out now appropriately by a dog woof and available on, which I just think is <laughs> fantastic, available on digital platforms, including Dog Woof On Demand, <laughs> which, is, which is automatically my favourite. It's produced, edited and directed by Elizabeth Lowe, who I'm delighted to say joins us now from Hong Kong. Hello, Elizabeth. How are you? Hi, I'm great. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> and I, I also feel the same way about Dog Wolf, <laughs> the company <laughs> being the perfect one to release this film out into the world. <laughs> exactly. And Dog Wolf On Demand is such a great name for, uh, for their <laughs> distribution. So just, I mean, obviously it is true to say that this movie is about stray dogs um, in Istanbul, but it, it's kind of, it's so much more than that. But, but tell us about how you came to make this film straight just tell us the the background to it elizabeth yeah it, i mean obviously i'm a dog lover and it came from a really personal place my own childhood dog had passed away and i remember feeling this need to suppress my grief at his passing because he wasn't quite a human family member and that really led me to want to explore what does it mean you know th there are certain beings that we give value to and certain that we don't and and the ideas around hierarchies around that we construct for ourselves around who matters and who doesn't and that made me want to center an entire film around a stray dog to give narrative time and space to beings and lives that are not ordinarily afforded that and so that led me to Turkey where they have huge stray dog populations and this fascinating history where dogs were persecuted for a hundred years but people fought for their right to be able to roam freely and then I fell in love once I got there and started filming. So can you just say a bit more about that? Because for people who are thinking, why Istanbul? You just started to explain that. But it is, uh, as the caption that comes up on the uh, on your movie explains, it's illegal in, in Turkey. Or is it just Istanbul to, to either in hold Turkey. or ca keep a, a, a stray dog captive or to, uh, or to sterilize uh, a dog? I, I knew nothing about the stray dog population and that Turkey had a different story to tell here. Yeah, it's incredible. So I've been talking to also a lot of British lawmakers about how significant it is that this law is in place in Turkey where you're not allowed to euthanize or kill any healthy stray dog and you're not even allowed to hold them in captivity. So the shelters there should be filled with dogs that are sick, not any healthy ones. And it's really groundbreaking that they managed to pass this law in 2004. And the history comes from the 1910s as the Ottoman Empire was crumbling. I think it was unfortunately a British diplomat who came to Istanbul and he was chased by a pack of dogs and fell to his own death. But in retaliation, the British government forced the ailing Turkish one to round up all of their stray dogs and banish them to a nearby island where they would starve to death. And shortly afterwards, huge earthquakes broke out and then huge fires broke out, partly because there were no dogs to warn uh, citizens of it. And so the people of Istanbul saw the exiling of the dogs as a curse on the city and the country. Oh. And so over the next hundred years, even as the Turkish government was trying to modernize Istanbul and, and Turkey and trying to get rid of stray dogs in this attempt to emulate London and Paris and New York, uh, people fought against that and protested and, and, and somehow they've managed to pass these miraculous laws that allow, now there's 130,000 stray dogs that roam Istanbul freely. And uh, I mean, that, that's a fascinating story on its own, but you tell us the yeah. story, well, we, we follow uh, for your movie, Zaytin, Nazar and Kartel, I think I've got the pronunciation roughly right yes. anyway, but, but we start That's with correct. Zaytin, what an, what an astonishing star, how on earth did you find these dogs that are the stars of your film? Oh yeah, she, Zaytin is truly a star and that's something I've realized over time. Um, early on in production, Zeynep Kapulu, my co-producer who's Turkish and lives in Istanbul, and I would just wander the streets of Istanbul being open to what dogs you know, spoke to us. And one day we were in this busy underground tunnel uh, packed with people and these two gigantic dogs were weaving between people's feet, um, it really in a hurry. And so that really intrigued us, like what appointments do stray dogs have to keep? Where could they be, you know, headed as stray dogs without jobs and without owners and without homes? And so we chased after them 
And they turned out to be on the heels of the young Syrian men who feature prominently in the film. And that on and off again relationship was really moving to me that the young men, you know, saw so much comfort in the presence of the dogs in their lives as they were surviving on the streets together. Um, but also Zaytan herself was just so stubborn and so independent that she was one of the only dogs in our whole production who didn't inadvertently follow our film crew back. So a lot of times other stray dogs would bond with us and they would follow us around, which defeated the purpose of the film, which was to try to see if we really handed over the narrative to a dog, where would that take you? <laughs> and Zaytan enabled us to, to fulfill that <laughs> mission. One of the things the film does is it, it uses quotes from Diogenes um, yeah. and it, it kind of intersperses these with the footage that we see. And I think one of them is, you know, humans live hypocritically and artificially and would do well to study the dog. And you've talked about the way in which the dogs actually lead us to, you know, a dispossessed homeless population within within the city. I, I love that idea that what's going on is more than just look, we're following around a bunch of dogs to see what their life is like. In mm -hmm. much the same way as Kady, which was a documentary about cats in Istanbul, had a kind of mm -hmm. philosophical conundrum at its heart. There mm -hmm. is, or at least it felt to me, that there is a wider message about the world in which we live, about people and animals and the sense of community in which we live that sort of sneaks up on you during the course of the film. Yeah, completely. I'm so glad that you perceive that. With Diogenes, um, he was this Greek philosopher who, believed, who modeled his own way of life after street dogs. He decided to not have a home. He decided to not be married because he felt that by not being complicit in all the, the things that make our human society tick, he could observe it better the same way that stray dogs, he believed, did. And so the film is really this cinematic attempt to put that ancient philosophy and practice. If you watch dogs watching us, what does that reveal about humanity and also dog culture? Um, and, and in following stray dogs, I also knew from the outset that because stray dogs aren't allowed typically into pr private spaces, the types of populations that they would be encountering would necessarily be people and, and other beings who are n always on the streets whether it's the young men from Syria trying to make a living in Istanbul or women who are taking to the streets um, for a women's march or, or musicians busking on the side of the street. I, I always sort of knew that a stray dog in Istanbul, they're able to cut across different sectors of society. And, and I thought it would be an interesting way to look at, look at Turkish society at that point, but just people in general. There's also a fascinating thing that you catch conversations between people who seem to be speaking completely frankly and almost unaware that the film crew are there. And I wonder whether, I presume it obviously it's a small crew, but did that happen because their attention is on the dogs and they're not interested in the people with the cameras? Yeah, I think the dogs were our passport into a lot of these conversations that ordinarily people would be perhaps much more self-conscious or shy about because we would explain to people we're making a film about what a stray dog like Zayton hears and sees around her. And once you gave that explanation, everybody sort of their guards were down. And also because I am a foreigner and I don't speak Turkish, I think that also, you know, having the trend, I didn't understand Turkish, so I couldn't understand what anyone was saying. I was almost dog-like in the way I was moving through the world. But I would get the transcripts back and be amazed by what people were saying in front of the camera. So that was a real privilege. <laughs> we, we have a, 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 one of the many running sort of jokes on the program, Elizabeth, is about Jaws, the movie, because mm. Mark always says, it's not about sharks, it's not about the shark. Uh, and then I always say, well, it is. And then we have this sort of pointless conversation. <laughs> and, but I think one of the triumphs <laughs> of your film is that all of those points that Mark and you've just been talking about is right. You know, we do, we are a part of the lives of the Syrian refugees. We do hear conversations, the snatch conversations about elections and evictions and demonstrations and marriage and that, but it, but your film is still about the dogs. It is still yeah. about this unique story because when we see, and I'm, I think most people might be braced for some terrible act of cruelty, which I don't think it's a spoiler to give away, doesn't actually happen yeah. uh, mm -hmm. in your movie, that the dogs are treated with respect, that the attitude to these stray dogs seems, seems different to what it might be in other countries. 
Yeah, I was really struck by how it felt like the human citizens of Istanbul seemed to see the dogs as just other citizens, like that they would either give them space or they would approach them in a friendly way. And I, I really like what you said about how this is, in the, at the end of the day, this is a film about dogs also, because and I don't want to use dogs as metaphors or animals as metaphors, because I think their stories are just as worth telling as ours. And I remember early on, people would always be very confused when I was pitching the story. Like, it, whose story are you really trying to tell? Is it humanities or, or the dogs? And over time, as I was just trusting in Zaytan's life and how it interwove between all these different populations, I realized, you know, our story as humans and the dog story are deeply entwined and, and in, you know, inseparable in our evolution and even in, in the way Zaytan's life unfolds. Um, and, and definitely I was really struck by even when dogs are nuisances, like when they're in a dog mob barking at each other, the mm. people, you know, they'll break it up with, you know, water hoses, but, but people tolerate that. And I find that incredible that a society has decided collectively that other beings have a right to exist, even if they're inconveniences. Occasionally. You, you must have had your heart in your mouth, as, as we do as viewers many times, and there are many moments where I think it's Zayton who sort of lies down in the road, and there's, there's, five, there's a roundabout, there's like five lanes of traffic, and they just lie down in the street, and you're filming these dogs. There must have been many moments where you were thinking, this dog is going to die, and I'm going to be filming it. Well, that, I, in that moment and many other instances, I feel like Zayton was taking a calculated risk, and I was also. If if I really felt that she was truly in danger, I would have intervened. I don't think we can make films about those that we love without, you know, without intervening. Sure. And so, so with with Zayton in those moments, it, it was funny because moments later, and it's not in the film, you know, a family comes by, they see Zayton sitting there in the in the middle of traffic, and they they start to try to hurry her along because they're afraid for her too. Um, but but she, I felt like with Zayton, she always seemed to know what she, she was doing. And occasionally I did feel like she was trying to perform for the camera even. Like in that moment when she's in the middle of the traffic, I've been watching that footage over and over again. And I actually think I see her wink at, wink at me before she <laughs> lays down because it's such a dramatic scene, even though she wasn't in real danger at that point. <laughs> Can I ask you about the, ver the very final scene, which is really moving, in which yeah. we have the call to prayer. And we have the the dogs joining in, and I mean, it's, yeah. it's there's something really weirdly mystical about that. Is, does that happen all the time? Was it just a coincidence? Did you know it was going to happen? Yeah, that happened a lot. Um, the dogs would sing along to the call, the Muslim call to prayer, and I have no idea what the dogs are thinking or feeling as they do that. But it, yeah, it, it's I love that. That's one of my favorite scenes too. And I was always just very moved by it, that they're a part of our lives. They understand us so deeply. And, and, but also, who knows what they understand? And, but it just feels like we have such a deep and profound connection with dogs. Yeah. And that scene I, sort of exemplifies that. Yes, I, I think so. And I'd written that down specifically for that point, just to make sure that we, we talked about that, because it's one of those uh, astonishing moments that you capture. And soon after, and, and that's the end of the film, and then one of the first organizations that you thank Elizabeth is the Animal Rights Federation of Turkey. I was just interested to, to see that and, and did they, what did they make of your project? Um, they, we, we actually just very recently um, collaborated with them to host a virtual online Turkish premiere of the film um, where it was a fundraiser for the Animal Rights Federation and they are in this place where they're trying to pass more laws to increase the protections of dogs. Because even though the laws say that you're not allowed to kill them and you're not allowed to you know, hold them in captivity, it's not always enforced. So of course there's gonna be violations of that. Um, so we are trying to work with them. And, and I think for them, the film has been, I hope is useful in celebrating what Turkey has achieved and hopefully continues to preserve that. And I hope Turkey's model of how they've managed to integrate dogs stray dogs into the city in a very healthy way where they're communally cared for both by the government and the people. I hope that can, can, can be a model for other, other cities and countries that are, that are dealing with what they conceive of as a stray dog problem. Well, and what do you work on next, Elizabeth? 
Um, I'm still in early development, um, figuring out what my next project will be, so I can't quite say right now. <laughs> and but I, I, I do Wars miss. Film? I no, no. <laughs> I I do miss <laughs> filming with dogs, though. I wish I could just replicate that. <laughs> And, and and I mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, you're in Hong Kong. Can you make the films that you want to make in Hong Kong? Um, I think it's it's tough depending on the subject matter. And um, I'm here partly because of the pandemic so to be closer with family. Usually I'm based in Los Angeles. Okay. Well, as you can probably tell, Mark and I absolutely loved Stray. You can, uh, you can rent it, you can buy it on digital platforms, but Get it on dog wolf on demand just for just just to have that on your screen uh, and, and Elizabeth there's Lowe, <laughs> sorry go on oh, i was just going to say there's also many extra deleted scenes where dogs are howling um <laughs> um in dog wolf on demands i think extras <laughs> yeah although Excellent. although i should point out that if you have a dog which i do don't play them on your television when your dog is in the living room because it really freaked my dog out <laughs> We have this actually, Dog Wolf has been uh, organizing this social media campaign where we're asking people to film their dogs reacting to the street dogs in Stray. And dogs are really engaged with the film <laughs> and to tag us at Stray Dog Film and, and hashtag Stray Watch Party. It's been a real joy to see the way dogs are perceiving this movie. <laughs> Excellent. Elizabeth Lowe, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you so much.